Hi guys, welcome to another video tutorial by Nate B for Nate B Sounds, my YouTube channel. Uh, today I want to talk about compression and, and compressors, uh, which is a plugin for for not only Logic Pro, uh, but also, you know, you find compressors on everywhere, every pretty much every uh, software that you can use to create music will have some sort of compression in there, or you can get get compression in there with third party plugins. The They are a very, very important part to making music. Now, before I start waffling on about compression and compressors, I want to say that I'm not a professional. I'm sure there are a million and one per people who know a thousand and one things more than me regarding compression and music in general, making music. As I say, I'm learning myself. This is my understanding of compression and compressors. I'm just trying to put that in video format for so no, maybe someone who doesn't know anything at all about compression or compressors, they can learn from it. But maybe someone who's more advanced at making music, uh, stuff like that, maybe they're not going to learn as much on this video. But I just wanted to put that out there before anybody starts rioting in the comments saying, you're doing it wrong, you can do it better this way. I just wanted to get that out there. So, with that said, what is a compressor? A compressor is a is a dynamic effect, okay? It is it is working dynamically on the audio that you're feeding it. So so what does that mean? So an undynamic effect, say, would would just apply the effect and it would it would apply that effect the same all the way through, regardless of the audio that is it is applied on. So you can think of a compressor as a, a slider just let me just get on there just on a mixer if that's that slider is moving up and down dynamically the keyword is dynamically it is it is taking your audio on your track that you're you've applied your compressor to and it is dynamically adjusting the volume for you quicker than you can based on the audio so let's apply a compressor here i have a bass i would normally apply some compression to because at the moment it just sounds a bit dull and its dynamic range is kind of, you know, it's not there. So if I play this for you. Now that's all that is. At, at the moment, you're not going to be able to hear. Well, I'll play it with all my other tracks. Uh, this is just a track I'm working on, by the way. Uh, if uh, I'll play it with the other tracks, you're not going to be able to tell what the comp what the need of the compressor is really until after i've applied it and you'll hear the difference in it so i'll play this now we, we don't have any compression on here now you can hear the bass but it doesn't sound punchy enough for my liking you can hear that it's there but it is not part of the track do you know what i mean the, the, i want this to be a very bassy track the bass is the main part for me for this specific track so what we're going to do is we're going to apply a compressor and a lot of people would uh would usually message me or in general and ask you know what's the best settings for for a compressor you know how can i set up my compressor what settings would you put in and it really depends on the audio and the track that you are you are making. You cannot, I, I would not be able to make a preset for you guys for you to then apply it to your tracks and it sound good. It would not work because the audio that you're applying your compressor to will always be different. It will require a different threshold because the audio might be louder or quieter. You will have to increase or decrease the gain um, because because the volume will always be different. The, the, the contents of the audio will always be different. So, as I say, it's better for you to do this yourself. Uh, I'm going to try and talk you through it as best as I can, but it really is, it's a process you need to go through for each sound uh, and really listen to, A, what you want from that track, and B, how much compression is, is needed. Because, uh, you know, each, there's going to be more or less peaks in each audio, right? 
So let's get into the compressor. This is Logic's compressor. It is a fairly good compressor, uh, compressor rather. Um, there are better ones out there, third party ones, but I tend to use uh, this, this compressor, Logic's own compressor, because it does what I need it to do. For sidechain compression, I don't use this compressor. I use a, a tool called LFO tool, which is this here. It's kind of a compressor, but it can be used for filters and blah, blah, blah. That's, that's not the reason for this video. But um, once I've got this compre compressor set up, what I'll do is I'll deactivate my LFO tool and show you how to you, to apply sidechain compression using the, com the, the built-in compressor in Logic. Uh, I have got another video on that I'll, I'll, uh, I'll pop an annotation on there it's pretty old now i'm planning on redoing it so bear that in mind but yeah so let's get dive right into it so as i say a compressor will reduce the reduce the well not reduce that's the wrong word sorry it will soften the sounds so say you've got a sound uh as our bass right now but if you was to look at it in a waveform it peaks far too often. I mean, with the bass, it, it wouldn't really happen, but with a, a sound with a lot of uh, dynamic range. And what you're wanting to do is reduce those peaks without taking away the content of the sound. So what you would do is you would set a threshold here of where you want your your three you know where you want your threshold to be where, where do you want to cut the audio off it will not just instantly cut it off well you can say it to instantly cut it off if you would like but what you what you would want to do is softly lower that volume so then you can then put the gain up of that the audio so you have a, a smaller dynamic range and uh so the audio is more flattened let's say and then you will be able to boost the volume without it peaking too much and, you know, hurting your ears. So, we would set our, set our thing. So, we'll play this. And if you were to go to a one, a one to one ratio, it, it, uh, 1.1, 1 .1, you know, close enough. A one, a one to one ratio would, no, you know, it would not do anything at the moment. As you can see, there is no gain reduction happening if I play this now. So this compressor is doing absolutely nothing at the moment. So the first thing you would do is set a ratio. Now, typically I go two, two to one or four to one, depending on how much compression I want. Uh, so I would, I, I'll say, I'll start off at two to one and see how we sound there. So we should start now getting some feedback on here, how much gain reduction, which is here, we are getting on this track. So it's actually lowering the volume for us dynamically so i'll play that again so at the minute we've uh, actually lost some some volume so this is where you would come in and you would give it a bit more gain so i would increase the gain there so there, now we've, we've got the volume to where we want it. We've got some gain reduction going on there. Now, the attack and release. So the attack, as you increase this attack, rather here, sorry. As you increase this attack, you're actually decreasing the response time of the compression. It retains the, the transient, the peaks of the, the audio. Uh, so again, that you would have to apply that to, to your own audio. So at the moment, we don't want any uh, transients peaks of that audio uh, kept. We want to, you know, lower them down so we can then boost the gain and retain that audio that is there. So that's the attack. The release. Now, the, the, the release has an auto uh, checkbox here uh, in Logic Pro X. I'm not sure about other software, but I tend to just leave that checked and let it do its thing. But I'll really, I will, you know explain this a bit anyway with the release when when you reduce this uh, this this knob it actually increases the response as the audio crosses back over from the threshold so your threshold is set here to 20 decibels let's say about 20 decibels and so at 20 decibels at minus 20 decibels that's when your your compressor is actually going to start working anything above 20 decibels is where your your threshold is. So it's going to start working on that audio for you. Now, as the audio drops 
towards your threshold and back into you know your actual audio that the compressor isn't working on um it will actually what it will do is it will kind of soften the transition back towards your threshold as as the attack would um it would it decreases the com uh, response time and it retains the transient your release would actually soften the 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 amount of compression happening from your above your threshold to actually no compression happening below your threshold let's say so as i say the ro checkbox kind of does its own thing you, you, you i never really have to mess with this but that's what the, the release does now the ratio as i say the ratio is uh is what how two to one let's say would be a, a very soft compression uh if you was into to increase this to say you know 30 that is a very hard compression so uh, what you would do is, uh, how can I put this into layman's perspective, let's say. So, a two to one, if I can, yeah, two to one, every two decibels over our threshold, which we have set here, only one would be outputted as audio because it has softened two to one. If you increase that, you get more compression more so for 20 decibels over our threshold only out uh, it would only output one so that is more compression it's a more harder comp compression the knee would be as you can see if i can get to show here yeah on this graph it kind of it makes the compression softer less noticeable let's say and so I'm going to say set the knee to about seven there and I'm going to set my ratio to five to one. So for every five decibels over our threshold of minus 20 decibels, one will be outputted for us. So uh, we, we want that zero uh, five to one threshold. Right. OK. So that looks about right for me uh we'll probably put that release so as i say i would put that release up but at the moment it's doing it automatically so we don't really need to worry about that too much so now as we should hear hopefully i will turn the compressor on and off and what you should hear is a lot better uh a, a, a much better sound now it'll, it'll sound the same volume but we should get more of that sound at the same volume so i'll, pl I'll play that now without first and then with so this is without our compressor on there. Love is pure and true. So as you can see there, as I was turning it on and off, the, the bass, you can hear it much more. I did adjust the, the gain there as it was a bit much. Uh, obviously, you would spend a lot more time on this um, to make it sound. I'm just trying to you know fit into a short video. Mm -hmm. uh, but as I said, I, I reduced the gain because it was, you could, it, it was kind of starting to distort. Now, you would play around with this threshold a bit here you know, uh, to counter that. But in this video, I, I've, I've gone over the details there. So as I say, you would apply that to your own audio and play with it from there now side chain compression uh, compression rather i said i would um i would touch on that so what i would do with side chain compression if i was using that i'm going to turn off there because at the minute that's my side chain compression so i'll just uh play this with and without the side chain compression so So as you can see there it's kind of pumping the pumping the to the to the <clears throat> to our kick uh, and our bpn that we've got set so we'll turn that one off for now and go back to our compressor so what we would want to do is grab our kick which is here and you, you've got two ways of doing this you can just apply your compressor straight to uh straight to your kick or the, the easier way of doing it which i'll show you here which is is on my other video as i said go check that out if it's, it's speaking you know specifically about 
side chain compression. So what I would usually do is take our kick, duplicate it. Let's do these off solo. And what I'll do is send this to a bus. So bus one, bang. And what I'll do here is set it to zero decibels. I'll send it to pre-fader. Uh, right. So what's happening now is the audio from this channel here is being sent to a bus on our mixer, uh, which is set to... Uh, it's here. So if I play this, I'll mute that, our original kick for now. So it's sending it to our auxiliary track here, which is, you know, bus one. So, so as you say, I'll play this. It's coming through here. Now what you want to do is mute your original kick. Uh, so you would set that to no output. So no, no audio is coming from there. It's coming, you can still hear it. But it's just sending the signal to this, this auxiliary because the audio is coming through this auxiliary. So now you've got that set up. What you'll do is go back to your bass. Uh, if I can find the bass, let me just unmute, uh, unsolo that. Uh, bass is here. So we've got our compressor. What we're gonna do is set this to audio one. Oh no, sorry, bus one. So now what is happening, it's using the data from this track here, which we've got set, sent to bus one, and it's using that data to apply this side chain compression. So if I play this, what I'll do is I'll just solo that and solo that. And what you do is, is try and adjust these so you're getting more gain reduction, let's say. So what you're doing it is pumping your audio, which is what a side chain, press, uh, side chain compression does. It, it pumps your audio and therefore creates the pumping effect. That's what it is. And you're achieving that there by that. But as, as I say, I find it much easier using the LFO tool. But as I say, the, the, you know, I've got another tutorial on that you can check out. I don't want to spend too much time on that. So anyway, that is my uh, take on compressors. Um, you know, just lightly touching on them, going through the, the basics of compressors. Uh, I'm sure someone, uh, other people, as I said before, would be able to tell you much more than I could. I'm no professional. Uh, I'm just giving you my, uh, you know, my, my basic understanding of compressors, how to use them, uh, you know, when to use them, what sounds to use them on, etc., etc. So take it as you will. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, let me know in the comments below. If you didn't, let me know in the comments below. Uh, it's always good to get some, you know, constructive criticism. Uh, if you're not subscribed to my channel, you can hit that subscribe button to get notifications when I upload videos. Uh, I try to upload like once every few weeks, uh, whether it be a new track that I've worked on or a video tutorial or just general chit chat with friends about music, really. Uh, yep. Yeah. Thanks for watching, guys. Peace.